Tool number one is think in degrees of belief. So when a scientist approaches a hypothesis, even one that he or she believes to be true, a responsible scientist will realize that a hypothesis can only really be given support or it can be disproven, but it's very hard to actually definitively prove 100% for certain that anything is true. Even with the most rigorous analyses possible, there is always the possibility that you overlooked something or that some data point will come up that will disprove what you believed. And scientists recognize this, at least as I said, the responsible ones. So in this way, scientists are trained to think in degrees of belief, rather than this or that, yes or no, black or white type of thinking. They see kind of shades of gray and maybes and nuances. Scientists are very apt to use terms like maybe, perhaps, uh, in this case, we don't know for certain, but, and of course the always present, more research is needed. Clearly, however, at some point, when the evidence piles up high enough, it just does not make sense to keep questioning a result. I mean, at this point, we are pretty certain that the Earth revolves around the Sun and not the other way around. You know, after years and years and years and years of observations and data just piling up um, from all different angles, all converging on this fact, we know almost for certain that that is true. But it is always possible, and I want to emphasize this, that that could be overturned. So scientists, even on that seemingly fundamental point, still agree that it's possible, even though the likelihood is very, very small, that it could be overturned. Now, for the most part, when scientists are thinking about hypotheses, they aren't thinking about something as clear and plain as the Earth revolving around the Sun. They're thinking about um, things that are, that are much more uncertain, that they, they cannot uh, know for sure, and that the evidence just hasn't accumulated yet. So that's why they're so apt to saying maybe, to saying possibly, and we don't know for certain. However, scientists are not just throwing their hands up and saying, oh, it could be this one, it could be that one. What they're doing is engaging in a form of reasoning that we call Bayesian reasoning. Now, not all scientists have this in the back of their head that this is what they're doing, and some do it more effectively than others. Um, but generally, this is how um, scientists sort of implicitly approach these questions. So Bayesian reasoning is named after a highly influential probability theorist named Thomas Bayes. Bayesian reasoning basically consists of assigning probabilities to your beliefs and then updating those probabilities as new information comes in and as time goes along. And in the language of probability theory, the uh, probabilities that we assign to various beliefs are called credences. So I just want to quote the theoretical physicist Sean Carroll, who has written about Bayesian reasoning, uh, because he really summarizes how we can apply this to all kinds of beliefs, all kinds of claims that we come across. He writes, quote, When we're trying to understand what is true about the world, everyone enters the game with some initial feeling about what propositions are plausible and what ones seem relatively unlikely. Prior credences are an important starting point for further analysis and it's hard to say that any particular priors are correct or incorrect. There are, needless to say, some useful rules of thumb. Perhaps the most obvious one is that simple theories should be given higher likelihoods than more complicated ones. That doesn't mean that simpler theories are always correct. But if a simpler theory is wrong, we will learn that by collecting data. And that comes from this book, The Big Picture by Sean Carroll. It's a great book about life, meaning, the universe, and reasoning. So check that out if you're interested.